just because I was big. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I weigh less now than I did when I was 12 years old. My goodness. Well, Dairy Queen was down the street from you. Yeah, that's, that's probably true. That's, see what I'm saying? <laughs> it goes back to that bad Texas food uh -huh. again. My wife says I have a, my name is a double-edged sword, mm -hmm. um, that people remember it. But also, sometimes people don't take me very seriously about what I do, and and uh, and um, and uh, you know I'm not I'm not. Uh, but you don't I'm take not, life serious. Well, uh, no, right. I don't. I take my work seriously. Okay. I don't take myself serious. You know, right. I don't. I don't think that I'm um, I'm better than this person out there, and I don't. I don't. I don't play the fame game. Uh -huh. You know, uh, so that I don't. I don't do. You know, right. but when it comes time to when those people have, have bought those tickets. That's important. There you go. That's that's important. And when the people buy the records, because that's um, they they they've spent their money on that, you know. So the, I mean, that's yeah. that's important. So then it becomes serious. Yes, it does. But but as far as uh, you know, being famous and and uh, telling people you can't look at me or uh, you know playing that and all the you know bodyguards. And, yeah, that's not your game. No, no. And so no, I don't I don't like I don't like that yeah. I don't like that game. Well, New York. Well, was L.A. or New York where you got the gig with Rocky Horror Picture Show? Oh, in, in New York. Yeah, I got it. Well, it, I mean, I did it in L.A., but I got, I, they, they had, I actually finished the play. Um, I was at the Kennedy Center in Washington, D.C., and I had, uh, been, uh, had been doing a play there for six weeks. And uh, I, this is true, I literally walked in to my apartment mm -hmm. back in New York. I've been gone for six weeks. Put my bag down right at the front. You know, you walk in, you put your bag down, you look around, you check your mail and do things like that. And as I was like heading for the mail or whatever, the phone rang. And and it was a, a fellow by the name of Brian Avnet. And he said, is this meatloaf? And I said, yeah. He said, um, I work for Lou Adler. And I went, mm -hmm. I know that name, Lou Adler. Lou, what has he done, Lou Adler? And he proceeded to tell me he owns half of Los Angeles, and he yes. produced the Mamas and Papas and Cheech and Chong and Jan and Dean, and you know, oh, it was like right. the major uh, record producer of, at the time. Right. And I said, "Oh yeah, I knew I knew that name." And they said to me, uh, "We're doing this play called The Rocky Horror Show, and we'd like for you to do it." And at that point in time, I really uh, hadn't got to the point where I'd go, "Well, let me read the script or see what this is or anything." It was like another job, mm -hmm. so okay, you take it. And and so I said. Well, okay, that sounds fun. What do I do? And they go, well, you play two parts. And I, I, I did ask them, what do I do? They say, eh, you play this rock and roll guy who comes out of a Coca-Cola box. And I said, oh, that sounds fun. <laughs> and then they said, you also, it's a double role. You uh -huh. play his uncle. And I said, and I, I said, yeah, okay, cool. I didn't ask them what the thing was, play was about or anything. And so then they said, well, we'd like for you to come out to L.A. And I said, okay. And they said, when can you come? And I said, I'm packed. Let's go. Here. <laughs> and I literally, uh, uh, about two hours later, uh, right. was on the plane to L.A. and uh, and and uh, th th there's a side story to this. Um, Chevy Chase had broken up with his girl with his girlfriend mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and was actually living in in a Volkswagen, in a little Volkswagen Beetle. And a friend of mine, a friend of mine, called right after that and. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I was talking to her and I said, oh, I'm getting ready. She goes, oh, boy, you're back. You want to come down? I said, oh, I'm going to L.A. And she goes, well, you just got here. I said, I know, but I just got a phone <laughs> call to go to work. And that's how I worked in New right. York. I mean, I literally was never out of, that was never out of work in New York as an actor for longer than about at the time it took me to fly from uh, Washington. Not too many people to, can say that. No. And so, so at that point in time, she goes, well, how long you be in L.A.? And I said, I don't know. I didn't ask that. And they go, well, Chevy broke with his girlfriend. He's got no place to live. Can he? And I said, yeah, tell him he can live in my apartment. So uh, for nine months, Chevy Chase lived in my apartment and ran up an enormous phone bill. Well, so he owes, me, he, owes me LA, he owes me $1,100. Yeah, he owes me $1,100. Well, so, I don't know about the meeting, your, your initial meeting with Tim Curry. Oh, well, that was funny. That, that, uh, well, it wasn't a meeting. I'm sitting here. We've been rehearsing the, the music. And uh, everything was fine. I mean, the song just, you know, it was a typical one of those kind of rock musicals. The words were a little quirkier, you know, mm -hmm. than, than normal. But we hadn't heard any of Tim's songs. We had only heard, like, Hot Patootie and, uh, and the songs, you know, uh, when Eddie said his, had his teddy and, and the, you know, whatever <laughs> the songs were. And, and, you know, there's a light and that kind of stuff, which was kind of, you know, a little quirkier. But it was, it was, it was right, those. Right. I mean, I was doing a lot of those silly rock musicals that were going on off-Broadway or 
and the Kennedy Center had been one about uh, about Buddha, and so and that's what I'd been I'd played Buddha. Okay, I can see that. And so uh, it was uh, it was it was weird. <laughs> the, it was kind of I was doing all this avant-garde stuff right. and all this. So anyway, um, we'd been rehearsing about six days, and they said tomorrow Tim Curry's coming in. We were rehearsing this little theater, and he came in from the top of the theater, singing "I'm a Sweet Transvestite." Wearing uh, big platform shoes. <laughs> he had his sets. outfit on. Oh, right? he had his out. We out with a mo. Yeah, he had his outfit on. I lost it. I mean, I really. I'm going. Uh, uh, no. And we looked at each other, and we just got up and walked out. I mean, we. Lit I literally just walked out. I said, I'm not, I don't know what I'm in. <laughs> I, I'm going. This is L.A. This is weird. This is. I've always heard this place was really weird, but this is really strange. Right. And we. And then we left, and and we decided that. Uh, you know, well, we better go back and check this out and tell them we can't do it. So we went back to tell them that, and and we got the sense that it it really wasn't about uh, about <laughs> about that. It wasn't like pe being in drag. It was. He, it, it took he us was a while. Character. Cause we, yeah, because all we had done so far was learn the music, mm -hmm. and they, we hadn't seen the script, and there was a reason because they knew that this was probably they probably had a lot of problems going to have a problem casting this part if everybody knew that they you know had to dress up in right. fishnet stockings but eventually I did and it was uh, I weighed oh geez uh, 50 60 pounds more than I do now mm -hmm. and uh, I wore a, a garter belt and fishnet stockings and a high heels and came out from underneath this uh, this blanket that was in a wheelchair <laughs> and I'll tell you what it it had to be the biggest laugh of any show you've ever seen in your life, they the people would, ever, the cast Tim Curry and he's a, really a great actor. He'd laugh, uh, you know, two out of every four times, uh -huh. because the audience would just. It, it was the biggest laugh I've ever heard in my life, and it was well worth it for that. That's my that's my greatest fondest memory of. Could you see you walking into Love the, Field or somewhere in Texas? Is oh yeah, forget <laughs> it. Yeah, no, you couldn't. No, Texas, forget it. I got a couple of hogs. Out front, warm it up. What do you say we mount those babies and terrorize Tokyo? Okay, can I wear my... You can wear your yukata and... Uh, yukata. And I'm going to wear my uh, leather wear straps. Okay, and, you wear is that. This, is this cool? But I do like those. You, like you can those tell straps? me about those later. Okay, guys, we're out of here. We'll see hey, you on the hey, hey, Where are we going? Where Osaka, we going? Nagoya, Tokyo. I'm Kenny Sargent. You know this guy. I'm Meatloaf. Meatloaf. That's right. And this be is, cool. Thank you very much. I'll see you soon, y'all. Don't go away. I'll be back. You understand? I'll be back. Kenny, let's go now, son. We'll see you.